Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Wingman Wisdom and to today's video. Today, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to finish it up talking about maybe a little bit about parts shortages and things that an RV or may want to be prepared for that's coming very, very soon. And I'm also going to give you a little bit of Wingman Wisdom. If you're new to the channel, a special welcome to you. I'm Alan Warren. They call me the RV Wingman. I'm a former campground owner. I love camping and RVing. I love the out of doors. I love most of the people who I run into most of the time. If you enjoy this kind of content at the end of the video, please consider hitting the subscribe button, uh, like it, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your family and friends who enjoy RVing and camping as much as you do. So first off, I want to start out, as I said, with a little bit of I don't know, wingman wisdom. So I started this walking campaign about three or four weeks ago. Every morning I get up, walk for a couple of miles. You know, a brisk walk where I'm sweating like crazy. I live down here in Texas. And I feel, I'm perplexed about it. First off, I hate it. I absolutely, oh, I gotta go walk again. But after I finish that walk, it feels so good. I'm hot and sweaty and nasty, but I went, I won. I did the right thing. But I'm telling you, every morning, I just, it, it's not easy. It makes me feel good to do something that is good for me that I didn't want to do. I won. The good me won, not the lazy me. So as I'm on this morning's walk around the neighborhood, you know, I, it kind of clears my mind. I'm thinking about different things. And I'm thinking about young people and kids today. And then I think about me being old. You know, it's common, right? Our parents and probably the grandparents said, what is it with kids nowadays? But I really wonder, what is it with kids nowadays? I'm very concerned for them. As I walk the neighborhood and I'm looking at the houses and sometimes there's a basketball hoop outside and, and you know, there's, there's signs of what goes on in those homes, I worry for the children that are there. I think we have, and it's not their fault. We want to say, oh, those kids, you know, look at those idiots. We're the ones that groomed those idiots. Parents groomed those idiots. Culture groomed those idiots. The things that they listen to, the things that they're required to do, like work. I saw a video recently, and this is old, and hopefully I won't lose you, but it was, if you remember the Andy Griffiths show, you know, Andy of Mayberry. Andy was the father, he was the sheriff, and the little boy, Opie, cute little kid, six years old, maybe seven years old, and he comes running into the sheriff's office, and, and his father says, well, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be cleaning the garage. He says, well, I, I've got to talk to you about something important. He said, well, it needs to be important if you forgave your chores and came over here. He says, well, hang on. He goes around, he sits down with him, he says, so what's the problem? He says, well, are there any rules what rules? Are there any rules for the way a father is supposed to treat his boy? He said, what are you talking about? He said, well, my allowance is 25 cents a week. I know this is 100 years ago. My allowance is 25 cents a week, but Arnold's allowance is 75 cents a week, and he doesn't even have to do anything. Why do I have to work for 25 cents, and he doesn't do anything for his 75 cents? And the father's trying to figure out Andy's trying to figure out the best way to answer. He says, well, you know what, son? He said, parents, fathers, and mothers have the responsibility to decide what is best for their child. And I've decided it's best to let you work for your 25 cents. He says, so I'm not going to get my 75? No. And I'm going to have to work too? Yes, you're going to have to work too. He says, son, what do you feel like when you finish cleaning the garage, when you finish your chores? He says, I feel good and tired. The lesson there was that work is good. And I'm concerned as I'm walking the neighborhood, I'm going, I wonder how many kids are working now. They're really putting in their time. Are they just sitting back riding on their parents' coattails? And the parents allowed it to happen. What are we teaching kids in this economic uncertainty? Part of me is very optimistic. And you know why? Because I think this is going to be a hardening experience for children. I really do. I think that kids are going to have to go, oh, I can't have everything I want when I want it. You mean I might have to work? I might have to get a job to pitch in and help my parents? I think that would be a good thing, like Opie cleaning the garage. What do you think? I mean, it's scary what's happening. We've got the experts out there, the financial experts and the health experts and everybody, and they're all wrong, except 
They don't act like they're wrong. And we're supposed to just be like sheep and follow them. I think we need to lead like I saw on that old TV show. We need to be parents and grandparents and leaders. And that said, now I'm going to segue into RVing. And I want to know what you think. Do you think that the economic future is going to be better for young people or it's going to be worse for young people? Personally, I think it's going to be better, but it's going to be really painful till it gets better. It's going to be like cleaning the garage for these young people, but a whole lot worse. Do you think it's going to be better or worse for young people as we get into more and more uncertainty in these economic times? So going into RVing, the you know Labor Day marks the end of camping season for a lot of people. If you live up north, even sometimes you live down south, the weather gets so cold, if you don't winterize your RV, you're looking at hundreds and maybe thousands of dollars in damage by not winterizing your RV. The parts shortages in the RV industry are not over, not by a long ways. It's not as bad as it was maybe eight or 10 months ago, but it's still pretty bad. Some dealers, some parts houses have got lots of some stuff and none of other stuff. And what's worse, they can't tell you when they're going to get it. So my suggestion is if you've got an RV and a kid or a grandkid, get the kid or grandkid, get a legal pad, go out to your RV now. Don't wait until right before winter time. Well, we got to get it done. Hurry up. Don't procrastinate. Get the child, get your grandson or your daughter. It doesn't have to just be a boy. Get somebody, a young person, give them a legal pad. Tell them what we're doing. Walk around the RV. Start making a list of the things, the obvious things you can write down. I have a suggestion. If a kid, the kids want to help, there's something. Now, when they get to be teenagers, if they haven't been taught this discipline growing up, some of them won't want to help and just think you're being a jerk. But if they're young, they want to help you. Remember what it was like when the Easter Bunny came and the kids were small? And they're just kind of walking around. They don't even know what they're doing. You say, I, if I was the Easter Bunny, I'd put an egg over there by that tree over there. And you kind of hint around and they, oh, I found an egg. There's always seeming to be something in your RV that, that either needs attention or it's going to need attention really soon. When you're going through your RV and you're making your list to winterize and you're making your list of things that need to be repaired or soon will need to be repaired, don't point all of them out. Let your child go and find them. Guide them, lead them, let them think that they found it. Oh, look, Papa, this is kind of soft here. The floor feels kind of funny. What's that color? The color's different on the cabinet down there on the floor. Why is that? Lead them until they're, they, they think they found the problem. And congratulate them. That's great, son. That's great, sweetheart. This is exactly what I needed you for. Make them feel worthy, important. I know it can be a pain in the butt, it's easier for you just to do it on your own. Just go and do it. Just get it done. You're denying that child the opportunity to, to, to expand, to see, to think of something other than this and, and himself, to try to help. It's bonding. It's a great investment. So yes, wintertime is coming. I, I know I get on my soapbox often. That's what I do as the RV wingman. But hopefully some of this made sense. I really do care about the future. I care about children. I care about us. I care about everybody. But I want to know what you think. Do you think that children today are um, more unprepared than we were growing up? I surely do. Let me know. Drop a comment down below. Or do you think that children are no problem? They'll figure it out just like we did. I mean, if you believe that way, that's fine. I welcome everybody's comment. Again, you can drop a comment below or you can click on the word description under this video. It will open up and you'll be able to see not just my contact information, but links to people that I do consulting work with and even the people that make this shirt that you see me wear and the shirts that you see me wear here on Wingman Wisdom. You can get a 10% discount if you use the keyword Wingman22, I think. Find that out in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, by the way, before I close out, you like the video, hit subscribe, hit like, share this on social media, in Facebook groups, uh, RVing and camping Facebook groups with your RVing family and friends so they can learn as well. I'm Alan Warren, the RV wingman. Be safe, have fun, play nice, and don't leave your good manners at home.